you. Hi everyone, Pat Doherty here with today's topic for Tennis IQ. We're talking about pressure. Challenging pressure as opposed to applying pressure. What's the difference? Well, let's go back to the outcomes that can happen on the tennis court. You've got winners, you've got forced errors, and you've got unforced errors. The determining category typically, especially in the highest end matches, is who's controlling the forced error production. Who's applying the pressure on the opponent to have to come up with the goods to get out of trouble or if they fail trying. And so a good player is going to try to stage those outcomes on you where you're in difficult circumstances having to thread the needle to get out of that situation. And by doing so repeatedly, yes, every once in a while you'll come up with that great shot, but even when you do, you're still walking away from that point saying, wow, I had to really pull something great out there. I don't know if I can continually do that over and over over the course of this match. So they're feeling the pressure even when they succeed against it. So challenging pressure is choosing to take your opportunities where you have choices of what you want to do with the ball and you're just choosing to go maybe for the heroic winner instead of applying the pressure to the opponent to have to come up with that winner. So when you make that conscious choice to stage yourself hitting a lot of winners and being a shot maker, you put yourself at risk of being the one who's accumulating the most unforced errors in that match. And so at the end of the day, the success to failure ratio, remember tennis, you can eat yourself apart and beat yourself by just making choices that give away far more points than you're taking for yourself by repeatedly trying the same thing over again and failing more often than you succeed. So challenging pressure means you are putting the pressure on yourself with your opportunities. Applying pressure means you're putting the pressure onto the opponent with every opportunity you have. So it's an important distinction to make. Let's look into it a little deeper. One side of it is in a match how you like to send the ball over. Have you ever stopped to think though, is the power I'm giving consistently to my opponent hurting them or is it actually helping them? And many times your power may be helping them. So think about how does your opponent like to receive the ball? Some great defenders like for you to power through them. They like to deflect back your power. So that's not gonna hurt them too much. Maybe more variety is what you need to start thinking and changing up the timing and the spins and creating a lot of variations that could throw their timing off. So especially on the approach shots, you might like to drive it really hard, but if you're hitting it hard and deep and it's not quite deep enough, you may be giving them the exact circumstances they like to pass from. So be mindful of both sides of this equation. Understand too, applying pressure is not outcome driven entirely. You may need to keep doing it though you're losing a small percentage of the points because in the big picture at the end of the day, you just wanna be on the higher end of the forced error production. And that will outweigh any great shots they may be coming up with along the way. But when they are having to come up with great shots to win the point, you're putting the best game plan on the court probably that you're capable of putting out there right now. Doesn't guarantee you're gonna win. It just means that you're challenging them to their utmost to come up with the quality standard that they have that's good enough to beat you and earn that victory. You didn't give it away, they're earning it. So. We've got to be open to getting outplayed in this sport too. It's one of the greatest learning opportunities you'll ever have. So don't shut it down when you're losing badly to someone who's much better than you. Pay attention to what they're doing. You might be able to learn a number of things that you can develop into your own game to make yourself a more successful competitor in the future. So if you're doing the right things that stage those outcomes, then you're headed in the right direction with your game plan. I would be very uh, mindful of trying things that you don't own yet, try to stay within what you can do when it's an important match that you need to win, and challenge the opponent to have to come up with that great shot whenever you can. If they do it over and over, again, you got outplayed. That's okay, that's nothing to fear, okay? So this is all about staying in the moment, not forecasting what the outcome is gonna be in the future, that's getting caught up in the future, and you can't dwell on the past. You can only take care of business here and now. So. Get into that pattern and into that habit when you're playing out there and try to work on a side to your game that's more effective at applying pressure a good percentage of the time as opposed to always challenging pressure. Work on it. Good luck.